Today, we're gonna unravel the mysteries of a vital plumbing component, the backflow preventer. We'll explore what it is, why it's crucial, and how it works. So this is our hero of the day, a backflow preventer. Before we delve into the how, let's address the why. Why do we need backflow preventers in our water systems? We all understand that water flows from high pressure to low pressure, right? When you open a faucet, high pressure here has a place to release its energy. That's where it comes out or in your shower, wherever it is. But there are situations like water main breaks or heavy usage during firefighting where this normal flow can reverse. Any reversal is called backflow, but when there's a loss of pressure on the entering side, this is back siphonage. It means water can flow backward from your home into the public water supply, potentially bringing along harmful substances from your home. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Say a fire breaks out down the street and they're pulling out so much water that it creates a negative pressure. That would be back siphonage. Say you had a water hose and it's down in your pool with that negative pressure, it could actually suck chlorinated water up into your potable water system at your house and into the city water main to be distributed to every other house in the neighborhood or in the city, depending on how big your city is. Now, there's also an alternative way, back pressure. Say you've got something in a plant, a facility, an industry, anything like that, that creates back pressure. Meaning, if you've got 150 PSI pressure in a building because you've pressurized a tank or something, that could force its way back into the city water system where pressure may be 80 to 100 PSI. The, the pressures are really trying to equalize themselves, meaning you've got high pressure here, low pressure here, the high pressure wants to push itself over, path of least resistance. Siphonage is just the opposite, it's low pressure, so it's trying to pull the high pressure to it. Guys, these are things you don't want. Now there's different levels of backflow prevention. An air gap. Air gaps can be used to protect low and high hazards under both back siphonage and back pressure. Now, an air gap is one of the safest ways. It's something you can look at. It's not mechanical. And really, as long as nobody jacks with it, you never have a problem. A pressure vacuum breaker, the PVB, only protects against lower high hazards under back siphonage. Nothing good there for back pressure. Now the RPZ, this is the big daddy of them. The RPZ can be used to protect high and low hazards under both back siphonage and back pressure. That's why this is the one really we're gonna go in more depth on today. So this backflow preventer is a mechanical device that we install in a plumbing system to keep water from flowing backward. You can think of it as a one-way gate for your water. Here's how it works. Inside the backflow preventer, there are two check valves separated by a pressure monitored chamber. Now normally both check valves are open and water flows happily from the supply side to your home. This is the everyday scenario with no unexpected hiccups. But what happens if there is backflow? The sudden drop in pressure causes the first check valve to close. It's a safety measure to ensure that no water travels back into the public water supply. If for some reason that first check valve fails, the reduced pressure in the chamber between the two valves will close the second check valve. It's a fail safe to prevent any backflow even if the first line of defense doesn't hold up. Now, in the mix, we also have a relief valve that opens to let any water that may have leaked through the first valve. So when you look at it, you've got an opening right down here on the bottom. And this first valve is closed, the water's gonna come out down here on the bottom. It's an indicator that there's something wrong. So if you have an RPZ like this, water coming out the bottom tells you there's an issue. I used to be a certified backflow preventer and tester, meaning, I could come out and hook gauges up to these and tell you what was wrong with it. Now, I don't do that anymore. There's a lot of other people that can do it for a lot less than I was charging and all the time that it took. So, I just wanna show you the insides of it. That way you see what's going on. 
So when you take it apart, this is exactly what you're looking at, your primary and your secondary. They've got springs in here, you can push on it and see that it's pushing back in the same way here. Now these have to go in the exact same way they came out. So you always wanna make sure that you know what you're doing when you take it apart and put it together. Now literally, you could get in touch with the manufacturer of this and order new zone valves. These are what's gonna be your first zone and your second zone. So they go in and out real easy. Make sure you've got it lubricated so it'll slide in and out. But testing this, you can tell if it's your first zone or your second zone that's gone bad, your first chamber or your second chamber. You can replace those parts, but my thought is, if you're in here, go ahead and rebuild the whole thing, if you're certified to do that. First one goes back in, and you know because you're spraying, the water's going this way. You wanna make sure that that water pressure can push it. Now the other one, you look at your spring here, it's going in this way. When the water pushes against it this way, it's not going anywhere. Again, make sure your O-ring's clean, lubricated, everything looks good. Right back in position. And then here's your chamber on the inside so that when water pushes back, if it does get through here, it's gonna let it out the bottom. So once you get your two insides in, now you put your locking mechanism in, your spring again, you may need to replace this assembly. It's got a washer here on the bottom that keeps the water from leaking out when you don't want it to. Slide everything there back into position. Make sure your O-ring is back in spot. Make sure your O-ring is back in the right place or it's not gonna seal very good. So get everything put back together. Hold your tongue just right. Now, this is a lot easier when it's mounted and in place to work on. You're not trying to hold everything and move everything around. But getting it back together with all the new components inside of it makes it work. Now, if you're not certified as a backflow prevention assembly tester, you need to call somebody to get them to come out, test it and certify it to make sure it's good. So that's an additional layer of protection. And there you have it. The complex working of a backflow preventer simplified for you. As always, if you suspect a backflow issue, it's always best to call in a professional plumber. If you found this informative, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Your feedback means a lot to us. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're always up to date with the latest from the world of plumbing. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.